Uh, Insurgent have something to bring out onto the table, even though they have been, you know, dropping all their series here to zero twos. Shockingly, when I was taking a look back at their champion pools, uh, Hopeless and Polar, like, they, they try and bring as much out as they can, actually, for these games. Uh, I think Polar currently sits at eight unique picks at the moment. It's not too bad for our top lane. Steve here, though. Aatrox being bad out. I like this. I like this from the weaker teams because Aatrox is actually busted currently in top lane. Aatrox is... He's a champion in League of Legends. Um, <laughs> his kit's just very strong. No matter what Riot have done to try and nerf his kit, ever since he was reworked during last year's Rift Rivals, he's always been a very strong pick. He's moved around jungle, mid lane, top lane, all very strong places to put him right now. Flex between mid and top. But it just seems like there's only one top laner in the LSC who knows how to deal with him. And that's Shine from uh, Empire. Nobody else knows how to play against Aatrox, especially in the mid lane. A lot of the mid lane players that we've watched play against Aatrox don't understand his linear trading pattern and don't understand how to fight back against the insane burst he gets once he hits level three. So I like that. It's just staple bans coming up from both these teams, mm -hmm. banning what, you know, the teams are known for. They don't want Polar on Kled. He had an okay game on Kled. Sejuani is a staple jungle ban. Um, that's just a, a nice ban of at least towards Alvis. He had a very good game last week. Take away the strong jungler. Zaya is one of White Wing's signature picks. And I like the Pike ban. Pike at the moment can generate something absurd like 4,000 passive gold just from mm. his passive. Uh, so just banning out that champion, it's kind of like when Ezreal was very strong as an AD carry, you could ban Ezreal because his Kleptomancy would give his team a natural 2,000 gold lead. Very similar, if you remember, back in Season 1, Season 2, Twisted Fate, where if you pick Twisted Fate, at 15 minutes, your team just gets a natural 1,500 gold just from his passive. So Pike kind of does the same thing, where his cut is able to give his team a significant gold lead in the mid game. So getting rid of it just means there's one less thing to worry about. Well, let's see here. First picks come out from both squads and Surgeon. They actually going to prioritize this Irelia immediately here for either Belby or Polar. That did leave open here, though, for Sega is the Renekton. Oftentimes one of the most banned champions against Armored Project made its way through for the first rotation. Gonna also pick up the Yumi alongside it. I would have said I would have liked an AD carry to pick, be picked up with Yumi very early, something like Siva, so that if you're going against a mismatch matchup, like a Nautilus being picked up by Insurgent, you'd still be okay in the bottom lane. Uh, especially with Irelia being shown here. That is going to be Polar's champion. It can be flexed to Belby, but I don't think it's one of his comfort picks in his champion pool. Uh, so that felt like they could have held on to things a little bit here, but very aggressive wow. topside picks already. Rek'Sai being picked very early for Armor Project. So both teams, again, this is my criticism for a lot of the bottom end LST teams, is when they go into draft, it's very rare you see a concrete strategy coming up from your first three picks. And the first three bands that we saw from both sides, you could get away with saying, okay, those are fine bans. You don't need a strategy when you're just trying to target ban people out and then react to whatever the picks come through in the first phase. But it just doesn't seem like Armor Project or Insurgent here have an idea of what they want to do with their composition because they've picked all over the shop. Braum being picked bottom lane, Sias Irelia flex picks, and then for Armor Project, they pick their top and jungle and a support. So it just doesn't kind of make sense about what they're going towards here. A lot of marksman bands coming out here for Armored Project. Still have yet to pick up their own. We're seeing our first Rek'Sai of and I summer. And I like that a lot. I like this a lot more from Insurgent. I like that they've gone for the mid lane control mage bands because Henry is a powerhouse in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Armored Project's AD carry bands here don't make too much sense to me because Martin and Shout are not a very strong bottom lane. Varus and Lucian are good picks, but then there's still picks open like Kaiser, like Siva who will do perfectly fine into whatever matchup you throw towards them anyway. Yeah, and you end up prioritizing this Ezreal right away. Still strong, but, you know, could go something just simple and safe like that Sivir, like you've mentioned, to pair alongside the Yumi. Whereas I would have liked to see them pinch the champion pool against Belby. Wouldn't have mattered too much at the end of the day if he goes towards this Sandra pick, which Ooh. he does. So it wouldn't have mattered, uh, but I think that would have been a more concrete strategy. Ban out these mid lane picks. Pick your AD carry first. And then Henry gets counter pick in the mid lane. We're going to see Alessandra come out here for likely Belby in the mid lane. 
Azir is bad. Derpy Corky. Might as well. Corky still left open, so that'll be in the mid lane here, likely for Henry. We see our compositions come through. Lots of poke available for Armored Project if they still, like you mentioned, have gone with this Ezreal pickup alongside Corky. I'm interested to see how Alves actually does here on the Rex side, because he even had, like, his Jarvan was still available through this draft. It's a, it's a bit of a unique one to actually come out here. And to be honest, I would have liked Jarvan a lot more here. A lot more aggressive in the early game. I mean, Rek'Sai does get some nice ganking paths, but on red side, they're not as useful as they mm. would be on blue, if I'm not mistaken. Can duel effectively against Silas, but then again, Jarvan didn't have the worst of times dueling against Silas very early on. Who knows? It could just be they wanted to pick their very strong bruisers top side. I think if you go mid late game Rexa might be a bit better than Jarvan, but still quirky picks. Let's see what they do. As we go in for game one here between Insurgent and Armor Project. Duck! Frog. Whatever that thing is! Squirrel! Rat squirrel! Rat squirrel with antlers. Muppets! Is that a deer? I don't know. Deer squirrel? Is that a deer rat? Band in Canada. <laughs> we, we set limits in nature in Canada. Can't have that going on. A dope corky skin. I like that. Oh, that's the pink chroma for it, isn't I it? I like that. That's the correct chroma. Do you prefer it over the dog? 100%. <laughs> I don't like incredibly unrealistic skins. Like well, what are your thoughts on then Pugma? Yeah, I don't like Pugma. Pugma it's, it's, it's funny. It's a funny April Fool's thing, but just to me, it's like <laughs> you're stretching so <laughs> far away. Like what I would have liked is Cogmo in a Pug onesie. Okay, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would have been cool. Yeah, so it's like it's like the uh, it's like the uh, old Warwick skin. Yes. Yeah. Yes, like Earthwick. Earthwick. Basically. Yeah. I like that. I think that's cool. I think when you change something so. Pivotal about a champion. It's like, like it's like it's like uh you know Maokai. No, he's actually yeah, Maokai is great. Yeah. Uh, but then like changing what Corky Corky's helicopter into a Corgi is like uh I understand the pun you're going for and like changing Cogmo into a pug. It's like uh it's a bit too much. I don't like the uh, a lot of people do like it. It is a cool skin. I just don't think it fits thematically into video games when you force it that hard. Oh no, he's a Gatically in gun start. Yeah. He's going against the spooky Lissandra skin too. Henry keeps doing this. He keeps starting E on And then he wonders why he's losing trades early. Right. He did that against the Talia the other week too. Q is just strictly better. And <laughs> when you're playing champions like Rennington and Corky, a lot of the time you are forced to rank up your W second or your E in Renekton's case, because crap like this happens, but Ola just jumps on top of him right away. Already got a probably projectile gonna land here in the bot lane. We're gonna see any, you know, academia synergy. It's just base as real. Let that slow push back in, but like we saw there, up in top lane, it's like he even gets this Renekton very often, but again. Having troubles here early on. It's, it's his comfort pick, but he seems to always lose lane when he gets yeah. his comfort pick. The Renekton as a whole as a pick in LST hasn't been great. <laughs> no, there's very few players that have been able to use it effectively. But I'm happy to see. I, I like I like seeing Renekton. It means I'm going to be seeing some fights. I'm going to be seeing some all-ins like this. Well, you know, Polar can just easily counter back that damage. Going to get that stun. Maybe go for a Q. No. Oh, actually, underneath tower. Maybe a little too far forward there, Polar. Down to about 100 health. Sega does have flash. I think he's just waiting for the dash cooldowns. But Reddick, yeah, Polar? Reddick's yeah. cooldowns are way too high early yeah. into the game, so can't really rely on that. What are Henry. you doing? Henry, you just let him walk up to you? Just walked up slowly? And he got a free <laughs> aftershock proc from it, too. <laughs> okay, Henry. Like, Henry just it, it confuses me when he plays this quirky matchup, because I can tell he's trying to play the Doinby quirky, the very hyper-aggressive in-your-face behind minions quirky, but he just doesn't do it right. All right, Sega. Let's see if we can get away from this one. Hopeless. Oh, nicely done. Gets the safety. Meanwhile, mid lane, though. It was all of eight. Alves comes in, helps secure first blood. Bouncing back from a really good weekend last week and already helps out with getting first blood. Didn't get to see his pathing or what was in play at that point in time, but very well played for Marvel Project to first up, pick up the first blood. And what I'll talk about is if you've watched Doinby's Corky from two years ago, the way he plays it is he 
Uh, rookie's cocky, sorry, is what I'm trying to talk mm. about. Rookie's cocky. He steps behind the minion line and trades aggressively with it. But in this case, Henry goes into melee cocky, and I think melee cocky is just significantly worse than range <laughs> cocky. <laughs> See here, Sega ends up teleporting back up into the top lane. Gonna actually maybe go for a solo kill here. Polar, getting um, tricky here, bud. Ends up having to flash away, so Sega's not gonna be able to finish the kill. I don't think he, I think it would have been okay if you walked back towards her, bounces back in. It's a good teleport from Sega, because it's gonna force one coming out from Polar now, and he might be able to bounce this minion wave in. I think he was expecting Sega to go for a flash or something along those lines. Look at how well Armor Project's bottom lane is doing. White Wing, although, not on the team that's picked up a win so far in the LSC. He's one of the few players that I think can play Ezreal in the LSC, which speaks wonders when teams like Win should be banned from playing Ezreal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. Potato. He's fine. Yeah, he gets back to safety there. Potato plays Yumi very similar to how Pop plays Yumi. Soak up a bunch of damage. Yep. Soak up damage, soak up key skills, and then bounce back in right at the crucial moment to allow White Wing to go more aggressive. What was the Sandra pick? very interesting. So, yeah. look at the Surge's comp as a whole. It's very hard to kill them. I rarely are notoriously hard to kill. Sala's plenty of healing. Kaisa's hard to kill for ultimate and Zonya's later in the game. We'll talk about it later, though. Yeah, here we go. Polar's got to be careful. Alves comes up. Easy kill without the flash available on the Aurelia. It's going to be a simple pickup here. Armor Project finding now two kills. Inexcusable death, really. Trinket is available. Didn't put any wards down. Simple gank path coming out. You teleport back to lane. You start playing aggressive. The jungle is in the vicinity. You're going to die. Um, that's just a simple mistake, but a good punish coming out from Armor Project. Very nicely done. Oh, Shout's got to be a bit careful here. Mount Martin's going to go ahead, put up the shield in time, but a decent chunk of that damage already went through, so Shout going to have to chug through the pots. Let's New job. Sorry. We can see ho Hopeless coming down here, but he's going to be spotted out on a ward. Yeah, because, you know, control ward's placed down, but they're still going to try and go for the gank in the bottom lane. Oh, they got level up. six here. They're going to just go for it. Get the stun on both members. Polar going to get knocked up, and there it is. Alves going to have that ultimate. Going to hunt him down. The Rek'Sai is going to find the kill, so another one here. Polar now getting extremely punished. Yeah, Armor Project really punishing that top lane heavy, capitalizing on the mistake made by Polar early on, or the two mistakes he made, and now just being hyper aggressive. Oh, no. Shout, prowling projectiles, gonna land and through the ignite, even with the heal being used there by Martin. Shout with the flash down too. Our project now gonna start exposing this bot lane. And now that's three winning lanes for the side of Armor Project with a jungler that is scaled ahead. At this point in time, seven minutes in, Insurgent really need to find a way that they can get one of these lanes winning at least, because if they don't, they're going to be set so far behind from turret plating, from missing CS underneath turrets, that when it comes to the mid game, I'm a project will be able to take any skirmishes and team fights. This could be the opportunity. Let's see. Hopeless comes around the corner. Potato doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Ends up trying to back off. Does get level six, but gets interrupted. So won't get rooted. Hopeless going to steal away the ultimate. White Wing going to also get taken down there by the True Shot Barrage coming out from the Silas. Insurgent are able to strike back in the bot lane. Very good gank coming out from Insurgent's jungler there. But again, Trinket's available for both support and AD carry. Ward is available wow. for Ezreal as well. Meanwhile, top lane. Sega, you got to be careful. That was the Vanguard's Edge being popped here by Polar. Sega still has Flash available. Here comes Alves once again, and they're just bullying this Irelia in top lane. Alves can just finish him off himself. Doesn't have <laughs> the ultimate, but does have the smite to take him out. He's got so much damage, and he's got a tier, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, this is a scary land shark now. But again, coming back to the point of the wards, you know, yes, it's a control ward in the tri brush, but you just killed Shout bottom lane. You killed him. You want to try and push the turret as fast as possible. They were a little bit slow to do that. So naturally, a gank could come through and try and make use of the fact that you've got no hit points. Uh, what hopeless. is going on? Hopeless doesn't have a chance here. Henry just comes over the wall. Belby trying to steal away the blue buff. Isn't going to find it. Risky one. Martin has come up here to assist. Gonna get the snare there onto Henry. Marn goes over the wall. Sega's nearby. They get two stuns here, but here comes Polar looking for a cleanup. That's gonna be the Rek'Sai ultimate coming through, and Marn's gonna get taken on down. Henry has to back off. Flashes away, but again, Armored Project. How the heck did all three members survive? And they get all three on the side of Insurgent. Tell you what, this is a seventh versus eighth place game right now, Opal, and Armored Project are not making it look like one at all. They came to play today 
They were hungry after almost picking up a victory last weekend in a matchup that we thought they should lose. And they are storming onto the rift for game one. They are already 6,000 gold ahead of Insurgent nine minutes into the game. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Alvez, though. The last two weeks so far, we saw the Jarvan game last week, now here on the Rek'Sai. Been all over the map, heavily punished. He's still hunting. Now I want to know where's this Rexai been? This is clearly a pocket pick of Alvis oh that we didn't know about. Again. He's just dominating. My lord, Polar. He's only level six at this point. He can't even farm up to get any more levels. Hopeless is gonna come by here and see this dragon being possibly occupied. Other side of the map, but though you got nowhere to run. Henry's just gonna help out. And he gets himself his own kill. Yep. Armor Project protecting the river. They've got lane priority in all their lanes. Martin's left the game. He's still <laughs> got the back. He got back in time to get the jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Armor Project just have complete control of this map, and they're asserting their dominance. Hopeless tries to step beyond the river. He gets crushed immediately. This is so much better from Armor Project, and I'd like to know where this team has been. Hello! Like you mentioned, this Rek'Sai pick. Yes, this Rek'Sai, so cool. Hail Blades Rek'Sai pick from Alves mm. is a good pocket pick. And we're not in the LST. Uh, sorry, we're not in the LCS. We're not in the LEC. We're not in the LCK or the LPL. This previously used to be a wild card region. This is your time to bring out pocket picks and say, I've got this thing that no one else in the world does. Let me show you how it works. Uh, Belby in mid lane. Here comes the package from Henry. It's going to force out the ultimate here. Sega, though, jumps underneath the tower. Going to get the triumphant too, and he'll survive. This is not OK. This is starting to get a little... This is not PG. Yeah. Insurgent. Oh, boy. Tato. Got to be a little bit careful here. The knockup's going to land. Killer Instinct comes out. Spellbook going to be used here. Unfortunately, though, <laughs> doesn't what help him mean? out. Wrong way. And that's going to be the Silas getting a double kill. He's like, save me. Help. <laughs> uh, again, it's just poor use of the vision. When you're this far ahead of Summer Project, the way you're going to start losing you know, to ganks and taking some gold back for the start of Insurgent is when you don't push your vision forward and try and spot out these Hail Mary ganks that can come out from Hopeless. It's still early in the game. Base damage from spells is still very strong. So they should be clearing out wards in the Tri-Bush. They should be pushing their vision forward to scout out is Silas on his way. Give them that heads up that they need since they're dominating so hard so they can continue to press their advantage. A good attack to the bottom lane. Uh, and it's, it's brought back some gold from Insurgent, but it just hasn't been enough so far. Well, you look at what's starting to get completed here already for Armor Project. You got Spear of Sojin for Sega. You have the Trinity Force for your Corky at before 12 oh, minutes. The Trinity Force Ezreal coming out too. Oh boy. It's With the hurt. tier too. It's going to hurt. The damage Ezreal. On OG Ezreal. On top of that too, we're going to get the Rift Herald secured before 15 minutes. A staple here for the LST. Early Rift Herald, early turrets, more gold in your pocket. Nicely done here by Armored Project. Get that ward. And again, you take this game into consideration or your whole picture when it comes to the season so far for Armored Project. It's been a rough one. Same thing for Insurgent as well. Oh my lord, Sega's just going to dive him. Vanguard's Ed, sure, but yeah, no, Sega's a big, big boy. Spear Surgeon already available, double Dorans and a long sword. He just has too much damage at this point in time. And Surgeon are putting all their eggs in the bottom lane basket, but Ooh. at this point, you've got a Shelly going top lane to an inner turret with a dead top laner. You also got Henry still just pressing that yes. wave, so Belby can't leave. And that's bottom side jungler for the side of Insurgent, so they can't react to this Rift Gold. He'll get another charge. Does Sega actually stay here? Uh, true Shot Briar to scout out who's going up there. Yeah, they still get it, so that's going to bring that tower to at least two-thirds health, even after it heals. Our project going to start back with the re-engage here. Belby got aggressive, hopeless. Unfortunately, can't finish <laughs> him off, but he goes underneath tower with the ultimate, and Belby's going to get the shutdown. Hopeless has ultimate available, ends up popping it immediately. He was hoping to get the chain to connect. Looks like, though, it will only be the one member from Armored Project lost here. And you know what, I thought that was a simple yet beautiful sidestep coming out from Sega. Making sure that when Hopeless tried to jump in with the stun, didn't get hit by it. No gap closer then available for Silas, so the Renekton ultimate doesn't do anything. Very beautiful from Sega, good micro mechanics. Another project will break bottom lane as well. And that's going to be 12 turret plates secured, as turret plating now just going to fall at 14 minutes. A big gold lead. It's about seven and a half thousand gold in favor here of Armored Project. 
And that mid lane isn't mm, isn't holding up much longer, too. Yeah. If you're in Surgeon right now, the way you win this game is you pray for a Typhoon. Start doing the rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping for some disconnects. Oh, you know, Martin's had, had one or two here, so maybe they're going to keep hoping. I don't know. That's not who you want yeah. to disconnect, yeah. Opal. Yeah, you're hoping that's going to somehow transfer to Armor Project. <laughs> maybe they are hoping. They're just getting unlucky with their RNG. <laughs> yeah, they pray for the Typhoon, but... The Ends Typhoon gods them. were like, oh, on you right now? Yeah, sure. Oof. Oh, no, Polar. You're caught out in underneath the wrong side of the map, bud. Alves is going to just take down and bite into him. This is not okay. This Rek'Sai is not okay. This, this Rek'Sai I want to see more of. He's getting banned next game. 100%. Oh, yeah, that's going to be banned. They're out. not letting Alves play it twice in a row. Henry goes back up into the top lane. He's also just going BF Sword. Oh, yeah, that's going to be... Uh, chunky amount of damage coming out from Henry. Ezreal and Corky are two champions that if you get them ahead, they're just so good together. Yeah. They've got high burst damage, high sustain damage, great poke, and great survivability with their disengage on regular spells. Oh, Alves. Steals away the Raptors, gets away from the Fisher coming out, and um. oh, Hopeless going for a ride. He's going to regret this one, though. We'll see. True Shot Barrage comes <laughs> out. He ends up stepping back into it. Alves was already there. Final Trapter going to come out here from the Yumi. That's going to force both flashes away from the side of Insurgent. Oh, yeah. boy. Martin almost left his AD carrier to die. Shout was hiding behind the Unbreakable from Braum, and he flashes behind AD carrier. He's like, you take the damage now. <laughs> Forcing him to flash away as well. He's like, you're the Yumi now. <laughs> you're the Yumi now. We saw Belby. He was trying to clear out the wave from the side, but still not even able to press forward here as Alves is just going to start hunting. With that, Armored Project should be able to take the second tier tower in mid lane, expand their gold lead to down 10,000 before 20 minutes. He also got Sega in the bot lane. Polar at this point, he's checked out. He's like, I'm trying to farm. I'm going to try and farm. I want to keep my CS. I want to, if I have more CS, I win lane. <laughs> That's the idea <laughs> at this point. That's not how this works. And I when do you have I seven deaths, I don't <laughs> think that's how it works. Hey, bigger number in the end. Bigger, That's not the big, big number brain. that you want, okay? Big, big brain. It's like, well, let's see. Ah, uh, teleport going to come out immediately. Belby is going to regret this. He doesn't have an escape. He does have flash available, so... Does get to safety here. Two shot barrage coming out. Oh, almost clips hopeless. That's not okay. How much damage he's already doing? True shot barrage at 16 minutes. That's not right. And I'm immune and 24 already complete. Woo! That's a big Ezreal. He's With an Ionia boots too. Oh boy. Sega gonna take second tier tower too. Gonna get their sixth tower of the game. Now Armored Project, they're, they're, they're like, we wanna make it a quick night. We want to get supper booked. Let's see what we can do here. Hopeless is going to try and rejoin. Has the ultimate available. Martin's also coming nearby. Sega hasn't used. Oh, he sidestepped away from the Vanguard's edge. He can just delay this. Oh, he ends up getting stunned here. He's going to try and do what he can. Doesn't use Flash, but that is all five members of Insurgent down toward this bot lane. So what? Uh, Armor Project aren't doing anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, what can Armor Project get? They get a cannon, cannon wave. That's it. <laughs> Sega couldn't make up his mind. Do I escape or do I go and fight? And he almost killed Polar, but made a decision a Henry. little bit too late. Um, <laughs> Where's exactly Henry where he going? Is. He wants Polar. He, he wants Polar. That's how. Oh, my what? God. Henry. Oh. Where did he go? They got help. Here comes Final Chapter. Shout's going to get just rooted down, and Henry gets the safety. Martin's now all alone. They take down Potato, but White Wing's still available here. Henry and him's got bursts of damage available. Valkyrie's in. Hopeless wants to turn this back around. Flash is going to be used. He does find the shutdown, but now Alves on the Rek'Sai is hunting, and he's just going to find a free Lissandra. Hopeless. Got to avoid the Q now. He's being tracked here by Alves over the wall. And does he land? No, not going to connect, but they should be able to hunt him down. Over the wall and far away. And do a boom. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack. <laughs> <laughs> the 10,000 gold lead, Opal. We're not even at 20 minutes. Oh, I know. I know. It's just, this is... Give it for Armored Project. feel like, you know, they've been bullied this entire split. Now they're like, you're the, s you're the other team that's down here with us. We're going to take our frustration out on you after this summer well, it's split. It's done so successfully. 
Oh my. Soak up waves. Yeah, tr uh, Infinity Edge has been completed by Henry at 19 minutes. That's why he did literally like 600 health with one auto. And they're still hunting. Marin's caught out. Oh boy, this problem's done. Knockup's gonna be there. Sega gets a kill. Seven one and four now. You know what? They heard our project. They saw our pregame stats. They're like, man, we only got the one point one KDA. This is our chance to try and Had fix their that. Stats, well they fix, fix this stat up here. It's hopeless is now Ooh. caught out. He's just gonna get taken down. Oh, has he might still die, Henry. Nice. Oh no! Missed it. Doesn't connect. So, stopwatch is gonna save him. It's actually a Zonia is completed here for Hopeless. He already used it earlier. Look at that. Look, look at that mini map. <laughs> Our project's sake. Good luck. Try and come into your jungle. We dare you. They're just going to take Baron and end here. There's nothing that Insurgent can really do at this point. A fight would just be desperation at the moment. They really need to kill both Corky and Ezreal. But even then, you've got a fed Rek'Sai and a Renekton that will run them off. In the best situation, see. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Our project, though, refusing to end the damn game. I, I tell you, they're just padding stats. They're like, this is our opportunity. Sega's got a 11 KDA right now. Alvis can see all these oh people, no. by the way, with his passive. Uh -huh. Hopeless now realizes this. He's like, Kate, we've been spot out, boys. Alvis with the tag there on the queue. Two shot barrage comes out, does not stop the back here. Corky's killing mid turret. <laughs> Henry! The rest of the team's like, we want to get kills, Henry! Uh -huh. Ooh! Okay, White Wing's gonna get caught out here. He should get bursted. There you go, nice pickup. But guess what? Alves and Potato still want to try 1v4. They get themselves the kill. Over here we go. Hopeless tries to jump back in, but that was a stopwatch being used onto the Rek'Sai. Now going to use his own ultimate. And there we are, Arbored Project a little too far forward. Meanwhile, though, mid lane the is base. Sega and Henry. The base, Opal, is Ooh. under attack. Polar ends up using the Vanguard's Edge. You're going to have all the backs from the rest of the team, but those are cannoned up Baron minions here. They tried to end the damn game. They're going to try. We'll see. Sega's going to get stunned up. Polar's able to land it. Hopeless not going to connect with the dash. Henry the could turn back, though. There's He's no ult. About it. There's no ult for Insurgent. Armor Project could try and fight this, but they decided to play safe. Very safe. All right, so Armor Project. You know, just delaying the backs. That's that's the key component there, you know? Oh, Sega's just going to come around. He's just going to fight Polar. Run! Run away! Hopeless is going to try and save you, but Hopeless is now going to go so low. Martin's going to try and intercept some of the damage here onto Henry. Henry can't finish off the kill. Oh, my God. Henry. Never mind. Henry just kills both of them in melee range. Here comes Belby to the side. He, I don't know if you want to take that claw, bud. Sega's going to get taken down. The ghost was there to maybe try and help out with a little bit of wave clear. White Wing looking for the snipe. Not going to find it onto Shout. Now Henry and White Wing. Trinity Force complete on both of these guys. Let's see if Belby can stop him from happening. White Wing, you got to focus something. You can't just hope for the Nexus. Here comes bot lane, though, with Alves and Potato. It's the Rek'Sai delivery system. Belby going to get back to the safety of his fountain. But with that, that should be Armored Project finishing off game one and rather dominating style here at 23 minutes. 23 minutes in, this game was technically over at seven. Armored Project had such a big lead and they were able to push their advantage in yeah. all the lanes they had, especially with Alvis having such a massive lead on Rek'Sai. Would have liked it if they cleaned it up because by seven minutes, when they had approaching a 10,000 gold lead, <laughs> that's where Armored Project should be like, okay, we can win this game real quick. Let's, we can literally let's, let's run it a, down a lane. Let's actually get a really good game, but they were just, they'll, they'll play in with their food finding for kills here and there so that's this is the enjoyment they get to receive here and again i like to see what did insurgent have planned that game because it seems like alva's plan was i'm going to pick my pocket rexi and just gank every lane and nothing your silas can do about it whereas for insurgent it was like we're going to play in the lane and pray <laughs> and hope we can so win the lane it looked like halfway through the uh, the goal was attack bottom lane which is not bad bottom lane for insurgent is probably their weakest lane too little too late I, I don't know. Polar's been having a... Polar recently, the last two games we've been seeing, it seems like if he loses one or two kills in lane, he just says, all right, you're just going to kill me again. I'm going to farm. 
We've seen this a couple times. We saw it with his Scion. We saw it actually with an Irelia True. last week. True. Now this game, same thing. He got killed. He's not winning lane. No, he's not winning any of his lanes. I think it's just inserting all their lanes right now. They can't really find an edge. Yeah. And their jungler is getting caught out time and time again, so he can't impact those lanes. And I, I, I just have to. I think I have to call it. Inserted split's pretty much done. They haven't had a very good split. They were the upset to get into the league. But since they joined the LST, we haven't seen too much else from them. Oh, this is just... How do we replay? Oh, God! Where'd he go? Magician, who did he? title of this video is just going to be Irelia gunned down in lane. And then you got the rest of the team coming on over. And then they're, sp they're separated. Martin's like, all right, wait, you guys are fighting the Ezreal now. I'm caught out from, from Henry, and they all panic. It just feels like there's no communication. I just simple clean up at the back half of this. Salvas, we get Belby and... White Wing will chunk out Hopeless to go on a, a wild chase. Yeah. <laughs> hopeless realizes a hopeless attempt to run away, so he's just going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Take a look at our post game stats 26 to 13 on your kill count. And just like that, it, I, I, I do not see any period in which Insurgent were actually ahead in this game. Uh, the first minute. First minute? Yeah, by like 10 gold. Oh, so they Probably got like... first CS. First CS. <laughs> ah. <All right. laughs> oh, no. What a... What a disaster. That was just Alan Project wipe the floor of Insurgent. This is meant to be a bottom of the table match. It didn't look like it. Again, Insurgent were hyped up. They beat Underdog to qualify as Thailand's third seed. And there was a concern because Thailand now have third seeds after winning last split. What if all three Thai teams are too dominant? Because Detonator is really strong. Mega is very strong. What if the third team from Thailand is very strong as well? Not the case. Insurgent has not performed this split. And they pretty much got one last game to show us something. Yeah. Alves is going to be taking home our MVP. Yeah, he's been juggling like a madman oh, the last yes. two weeks. Alves has put on his big boy pants recently. He says, all right, we have a slim opportunity for playoffs. I'm going to try my damnness try and make that a possibility and i mean he almost got the upset victory last week he was doing so much work on javan finally pulls out his pocket pick i feel it's a little bit too late i would have loved to see his rexai a lot sooner now that we know he can play the champion so well because if it can draw a couple bands and it opens up other picks for you throughout the, yeah. the rest of the game it will probably draw a brand band in the second game of this series as well i don't yeah. think that insurgent can realistically let him play the champion again no, it was disgusting. Cause, and he also it exploited just it, too. Because, like, bye. we saw that on top lane. Yeah, Polar trying to walk back to lane. Ward was down. Alves was just like, okay. And he sees this RL. He's like, yeah, it was ah, ganks. And food. that's something that both these teams really need to work on. Both teams' early game vision is very shaky. Mm -hmm. Not using trinkets, not clearing out wards, not pushing your vision deeper into the enemy jungle when you have an advantage. So make sure you can continue working the lane. Uh, I would like to see both teams clean that up before they go into game two. Well, Armor Project takes home game one. We'll see if Insurgent can turn around and maybe pick up their first win.